Hi, I'm Michael Woods, Chief Scientist at the Asian Turfgrass Center, and this is another ATC Double Cut, where I take a second look at something I've written on the ATC website, on my blog, and I discuss some of the background information or some supplemental information or some stories about this, something about why I decided to write about a particular topic. I will put the information about this specific post about zoysia, zoysia on highway medians on uh, roadsides in Thailand. I'll put this specific link to that post so you can go through and look at the pictures in the description to this. Um, but for now, I'll go ahead and bring up the post. And the post is one that I did after a recent road trip. And actually, this is the second time I've written about this. The, the zoysia being sodded on highway medians in Thailand. I, I think this is fascinating and uh, these posts tend not to get a tremendous amount of attention. So I think I might be one of the only people that's interested in this, but it's something that I think has application to managed turf grass. And the highway medians in Thailand are not really managed turf grass. What, what they are is they are construct at the time of construction they're all sodded as as a matter of course with zoysia with zoysia matrella with a variety that's grown on nurseries around bangkok called noa noi which is a, a rapidly growing variety of zoysia matrella and the story behind this one is that last year last october in october of 2020 i took a road trip to northern thailand i was going through lampang province and I passed a highway that had just been constructed and had recently laid sod. In fact, I passed a section of the highway where they were laying sod. And, and then I went to a section of highway where the sod had been laid uh, a couple months before, maybe, maybe a month before or something. And it, it's still zoysia. And, and I've seen this all over Thailand, but this was the first time that I actually stopped to take a picture. And last year, last October, when I took a picture of this, it was all zoysia, but I was making a prediction that it would not remain as zoysia. And I happened to be on that same highway again in November of 2021. I, I was on another trip through that part of Thailand. And when I, when I went there, I saw that a lot of weeds had grown up because the grass was being maintained exactly as I predicted it would be with no irrigation and with infrequent mowing. And when that happens, zoysia does not persist. In, in this climate, zoysia does not persist when it is not irrigated during the dry season and when it is not regularly mown. And this is a topic that, that is kind of stuck in my head because it's something that Dr. Milt Engelke and I talked about one time. I was visiting him in Oregon and he was extolling the virtues of zoysia, which I also like to extol the virtues of zoysia as a turf grass, but I like it as a managed turf grass. And I was explaining to Dr. Engelke or asking him if zoysia is so good as a low maintenance grass, why does it not persist in Thailand on roadside medians where it is habitually planted as sod at the time the median is constructed? And Dr. Engelke suggested to me, he asked if I'd checked it, he thought maybe it was growing too good. And he asked if maybe it was root bound, if, if there was so much uh, biomass, so much plant material right at the surface of the of the soil like thatch and that the roots maybe were getting just stuck right in that layer and because of that the roots weren't going down into the soil and maybe the the turf was drying out and struggling and and not persisting because of that and i assured him that that wasn't the case and that the the zoysia was not persisting because not because it was growing too well but because it wasn't growing enough that's that's what our conversation was about. And that was some years ago, but ever since then, I've really paid attention to the zoysia and the highway medians in Thailand because I want to document this 
and try to understand a little better what's going on. And it's it's interesting, if we go to a park in Bangkok, we would see zoysia persisting in the areas with full sun, with irrigation, and with regular mowing. But if you take away that irrigation during the dry season and, and let the zoysia get drought stressed and, and, and become dormant, and dormant from, from lack of water, and if you don't mow the, the zoysia frequently to keep some of the weeds down, what happens inevitably is a complete replacement of the zoysia grass with a type of species that can tolerate such conditions. Now, I think that this is interesting and it's actually applicable. It's, it's applicable to what we do in managed turf grass also, because if we understand what the failures of a grass can be or what the requirements of a grass can be by looking at how it performs well or how it fails in in a low maintenance environment it becomes relatively easy to adjust the work in just the right way when the turf is being planted and managed in a higher maintenance type of situation so that's what that's what that post is all about that's what that uh, some of the background information about why I write about this topic and I will continue as I travel around Thailand and other parts of the world to pay attention to things like these. I, I am fascinated by how grass grows in a relatively low maintenance environment because if we look at what the good features and the bad features or the weak features are of particular species in different environments, we can better adjust how the turf should be managed when it is planted in a managed environment. You'll always find more information on my website, or you can also follow me on Twitter. If you don't, I'm at Asian Turfgrass on Twitter. That's a good way to keep up with things that I'm doing. And um, otherwise, check out my website. There's plenty of information about zoysia, about parks and even about zoysia on highway medians in Thailand. That kind of thing I'll often use a, a turf tourism hashtag for. All right, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate you having some interest in these type of topics, and I will see you next time. Thank you.